Well, greetings from Bloomington, Indiana, the Hoosier at the home of Indiana University, and our church, City Church for All Nations. And it's been a great experience for me to be in North Carolina, to get so many, to get to know so many pastors, their wives, their churches, and see what God's doing in other territories, other areas, because he's still working, isn't he? Amen. Well, it's been a, a special pleasure to be with Pastor Wallace and Pastor Joy from Carpenter Shop. They are just so hospitable, so easy to know, so trustworthy, and I just did respect and admire the things that they're doing for God. And they're very easy to love. <clears throat> well, even before I knew the Lord, he gave me a wonderful husband who later became a man of God. He gave me four lovely children, and all my focus was on my family. Because I was brought up in a single home, didn't have a father in the home, and all I wanted was to have tight fit family that loved each other. So when I got it, I thought, got what I wanted, that's all I need. Little did I know what I really needed. But just it was just because of the love of God that he sent an African-American, spirit-filled Pentecostal to our home because he had plans um, for, us, for our family. She was very shy, really didn't speak a lot, but there was something about her that just made me feel so happy when I was around her. <clears throat> so um, she prayed for our family, great intercessor, had a love for souls, and the Lord told her, I don't want you to leave until someone is saved. I'm gonna save somebody in this family. And that's just like the Lord, he said, he always picks a solitary to pray for the rest of the family. Thirteen years after Alma came to the home, the pastor Kim was saved and filled with the Spirit. So it was a great awakening spiritually for us. Things began to change. And a year later, I was born again and filled with the Spirit. And until then, I've been a very selfish and a very insecure woman. But when God filled me, and I began to know the love he had for me, suddenly I wanted to do something for him and others. Well, what could I do? But I found something to do. They had a volunteer program in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the Methodist Hospital a program, a volunteer chaplain. So I was there. It wasn't uh, very long after I came that I was questioned about praying for patients. And I was even asked not to pray a few times. But I continued to pray, and somehow the Lord worked it out. So I was there for 25 years. Then we moved to Bloomington to be with our son and to help serve in the church there. I volunteered in the program at, at Bloomington Hospital and again had the same experience. Uh, don't pray for the patients. Don't embarrass people. <coughs> and the Lord worked it out so that I continued to pray for people and also be the encourager that they wanted me to be. So after 10 years, I decided to volunteer at the Monroe Hospital, a new hospital that was close to my home. It was a new hospital with a new spirit. And I was able to minister to the employees as well as the patients, to bring salvation, to bring healing on whatever their need was and that whatever they were ready to receive. Now, how do I do this at age 90? <laughs> First, I love Jesus, and I have a desire to bring Jesus to others. Amen. 
And do I have aches and pains? My body, yes. Sometimes it seems like it's a different pain every day. But I've learned to overcome. I've been taught how to fight the devil. How to, um, that it's a good fight, a good fight of faith. And in his word, he tells us that he has um, given us healing and health. Yes. And so um, sometimes it takes a little extra push because the devil wants to wear me out and he wants to make me ineffectual. But I've decided to make the devil weary. <laughs> 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 Right, so I often have to speak the word over my body and fight the devil with my prayer language. And mainly I have to encourage myself. Not that I don't have others to pray for that mean a lot to me. We all need people that will pray with us and for us. And I pray for strength and wisdom and love and his power. Scriptures help me to quote them out loud. They help me lift up in my ministry and I love the one that says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. And I like the one that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength Amen. and song. Yeah. And another one is, uh, I will triumph in the works of my hands. Yes, Father. And uh, I like the one that says that he gives angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Yes. So scripture is a good, a good way to receive strength from God. Now then, I get excited to be with the young people in my church. They like to see me excited about the Lord, and uh, somehow it, it impresses them and uh, encourages them. They see me consistent in my attendance and my praise, and so I'm glad to be able to do that. So even in our older years, we can be a blessing just being in the house of God. Because when Alma first came, see, she didn't really lecture me or talk to me. But it was something I felt in her that touched my spirit. So we can all do that with our neighbors. I belong to two um, uh, life groups. I belong to the Super Saints, that's for the older ladies. And then sometimes I will go to the younger ladies' life group. Because I can relate to them. I've been through it. I can remember how the struggles that we had with children. And I understand that life sometimes is hard. I'm also on a celebration team. That's about six of us that come forward after the ministry, after the pastor has given his message, opens an altar call, and encourages people to come forward. A lot of times people come forward because they're uh, dealing with the message. They want to talk about it. A lot of people have sickness at home, loved ones, divorces, all kinds of problems. So I enjoy doing that. And the last thing I want to tell you about is I'm on a team for the KNMI International Ministry. And that's why I'm here today. And I love that. I'm a part of praying for of the ministry and, and oftentimes before he goes anywhere to other pastors we in the spirit seek out what does this pastor need what the situation in this church so I not, might never see these people but I've been blessed this time to be able to see Pastor Wallace and his family and his wife be with them so um my contribution is a lot in just praying. So I encourage you all in your last season of life that age is just a number. And don't let Satan 
steal your giving spirit and your opportunity to be a giver and a worshiper yes. and a blessing. Yes. And I remember Alma, just the taking of the spirit with you, with your neighbors, with your friends, can lighten somebody's burdens. And um, I want you to know that you can be a helper still in the kingdom of God. And we all want to hear the Lord say, enter in my, faithful, my good and faithful servant. So now I'd like to pray for you. If you'll put your hand on your heart. Lord Jesus, I just pray that these latter saints, people in their latter years, will know and have a new vision of themselves and to understand that they're needed and that they're blessed and they they're not being passed by or they're not able to contribute that they understand that they can be still useful in the kingdom of god i well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity it's been exciting for me and lord bless you all bye bye Amen.